Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I recently introduced a quilt you may have seen in our email. This is called Raspberry Lemonade. Um, it's actually a quilt I designed several years back. I love raspberries. We grow them in our garden and like to make raspberry lemonade for my family in the summer. And when I saw Sweet Beginnings, it's a new collection from Maywood Studio by Jira Brandig. She's one of their newest uh, designers and it's her first collection with Maywood. Um, I thought it was a beautiful combination for this quilt. So this is kind of a mini tutorial. There's basically three blocks in this quilt. The one that is the most involved will be the one that I'm going over with you today. That's this block right here. It's made of half square triangles sewn together in the middle to make a beautiful pinwheel. And you see some more half square triangles in the corners. And then you've got some flying geese blocks. I'll be giving you uh, an option on those half square triangles and showing you a really fun and fast way and precise way to be able to make those flying geese blocks. The other two blocks that are in the quilt are pretty simple. I'll just talk you through that right now. So if you do uh, decide to grab the kit, you'll have all the resources you need to be able to make the quilt um, just as precise as we did here or maybe you're going to just grab that pattern and use your own fabrics. Still, maybe some helpful information for you. Uh, this block here is, is basically just a square. I put some smaller squares in those corners, right side together, drew the line uh, diagonal from one corner to the other. And you just sew on the line and flip. It's basically called a sew and flip technique. And it's called snowballing the corner. It's kind of a slang term, I guess, in quilting. So that's how you complete this block here. The other block is very straightforward, just squares um, and some rectangles. You can see we assembled our four patch here. And then here we just have some rectangles with squares on the end. Of course, you're sewing this together in rows and then assembling the block. Very straightforward on that one. This is again where we'll put our focus today um, and give you some tips and techniques. So maybe you are fairly new to the quilting community or maybe you've struggled with piecing. Maybe there's some helpful information for you. So with half square triangles, we always start with just two squares. That's how we always start. And our pattern's gonna guide you into making your half square triangles just a little bit bigger than they need to be so that once they're assembled into the pinwheel, you have something extra to square up. I've always found blocks will come out better when I can add squared up elements going into that block assembly much more likely to come out with the block being beautifully pieced with the points coming together and the block is the right size that it should be. I historically have made blocks undersized sewing with a larger than quarter inch seam allowance. So that's also a very important step when you're using uh, anytime you're piecing is be very solid on that quarter inch seam allowance. So traditional half square triangles, I'll just grab a straight edge here and a friction pen are simply made drawing diagonal to diagonal, drawing on the lightest side of the fabric, of course, so you can see what you've drawn, and pinning. Um, I've done this ahead of time where you're just going to pin that, and then you simply sew a quarter inch. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can see that better on that side. On either side of the line, that's all you're doing. Tracking a quarter inch away from this line, turning and tracking back. And you'll want to do that for two sets of the squares. So I've done that ahead of time. And then you'll just take your straight edge and cut that precisely on the line. We'll make sure our iron is definitely heating up to full hot. It looks like it is. And we'll be pressing toward the dark. If you have, it, it, that, it doesn't actually matter whether you press toward the light or the dark, just be consistent with whatever you do so that your block, let me just show this to you. See that on the back, how we always press toward the dark on that. Later on, when we assemble the two rows, we press the seams open. But initially, 
we will press to the dark and I'll show you the importance of that. We're going to get some really nice interlocking seams. I want to sew this pinwheel together with you and square it up with you so that you're able to see how to do this. Now once after we get this process done, we'll be using something called star shingles. It's a wonderful aid. It's my favorite technique for making half square triangles. But again, I wanted to show you the traditional approach and then later we'll give you the option. Now, whenever you are going to oversize your half square triangles, I would recommend you don't square them up now, but you wait. You assemble the oversized half square triangle into the pinwheel unit and then square up the entire pinwheel unit as a whole. I know that some people would now square these up to be the exact size. These are slightly oversized. They would square them up to three. I wait. That's my preferred technique because I want every chance to square up in the very end. If you square up now, you won't have a chance to square up again later. So that's the thinking behind that. One of the other things I encourage you to do is to lay out your pinwheel. I can't tell you how many times I have drawn, uh, sewn a pinwheel together in the wrong orientation. And of course I'm grabbing for the seam ripper, which is never too far away from my sewing machine. <laughs> um, so I like to lay everything out first. Let's just bring that over a little more front and center. I'm looking at my picture here of my pinwheel. You can see it's very easy to get this off. So uh, go ahead and lay that out. Now, when we get ready to sew a pinwheel together, we're of course placing this right side together. Remember how we had those uh, seams pressing in the dark uh, to the dark side? That's gives us the interlocking seam. Again, if you could press to the light, that's fine, but both need to be pressed to the light. But now I have these wonderful interlocking seams here, nearly ensuring I'll have a beautiful uh, seam coming together right there in the middle. I'm gonna put a pin here. Of course, we're gonna be sewing down this side. So let's just get that like that. Now this is the point we want coming together right here. I'm not going to start here and hope that this lands. I'm going to place these right side together. I'm going to rotate this and we're going to start sewing here. This will help ensure that point is absolutely where we want it to be. So we'll take this to the sewing machine and we're really concentrating on a good quarter inch seam allowance, not more, not less. Okay, let's see here how we did. At this point, we're going to want to press that seam open. You saw that on the block. And you see this point right here? I want to point this out. Let me clip that thread. That point right there. Let's put a ruler on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure this for you. That should, this is that dash line is a quarter of an inch. Let's press that out a little bit better right there. That right there is a quarter of an inch. So when we get ready, let's press this one open. When we get ready to sew that, these together, I am looking for that place. That will ensure, if I cross that with my needle, the theory is <laughs> that we will be at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. See that? So now we want to stack this. And I'm looking. Hopefully you can see that from above. I am looking. So you're going to start pinning right there in the middle, right there.
and we'll go in the corners and we'll pin over there. These are the patchwork pins. This is my absolute go-to. I used to think pins are pins are pins. What's the fuss about pins? It's a thing. These are the extra fine pins from Clover. And I love that they are so sharp um, that they glide into the fabric and they don't interfere. Some of the old pins I used were a very thick gauge um, and had a plastic head. I've melted pins with my iron inadvertently touching them. Pins matter. All right, quarter inch seam allowance. let's see how we did we know what we're looking for we know we want that to come together in the center and I'm happy with what I'm seeing if you're not happy with what you're seeing seam rip absolutely seam rip fix it this is the chance to do that just like our other block we're going to press the seam open there's a lot of seams coming together here in the middle That's a lot. Any, no matter what you do, no matter what technique, there's a lot of seams coming together. But by pressing the seams open, we're at least distributing the bulk evenly. So we talked about the fact that our block is slightly oversized. And now we want to square that up. Our instructions, let's just verify that. I believe our instructions are having to trim the pinwheel up to five and a half. Now there is no five and a half square up tool. This happens to be, I believe this is a six and a half. Let's look at that, a six and a half. So let's look at our lines here. From here to here is six inches. I have no magic way to do this, but I do have these lines that assist me with the ability to, and I'm gonna grab a spinning mat big time. Anytime I'm gonna square, square up a block, I want to use the assistance of that. So we're going to start off with, let's trim. On two sides because we can, okay. Now we're trying to establish five and a half inches. You may say, you know what? I like this ruler because I've got five and a half. I now know that I can sit this into that corner. Here's a line we just trimmed. Actually, we just trimmed those two sides, I believe we did. So let's trim. We're gonna line up five and a half and five and a half, just like that. You see this? We've done those two sides. I'm going to rotate this way, actually. I, I just need space here, don't I? See my diagonal line running down that? Take your time on this cut. This isn't a cut we normally do, is it? Oh, and I bumped that. That's okay. As many mats, you need to clear the area. <laughs> Incoming, right? Okay, so now we have a squared up pinwheel that is squared up to five and a half. Not a normal measurement, not a normal measurement, but the block finishes at 10 inches. So we've got five and a half inches, right? This will end up being five. These will end up being two and a half and two and a half means those need to be three. So that's, that's one approach. It's extra work. Um, by oversizing and squaring up, but now at least I have a pinwheel that is exactly what it should be. My favorite technique, star singles. You can avoid upsizing, you can avoid squaring up and doing everything I just did by using star singles. You will always purchase the star singles and the size for which 
the finished block is. This is three inches going into the block. It'll be two and a half inches finished once it's in the block. So you'll always want to buy the star singles for the finished size. How do star singles work? They're, in, they're, they're just amazing. You'll get quite a few in your pack. And the instructions on the sheet tell you what to do. Cut seven inch squares of fabric for this particular size. And I always upsize mine. By the way, these are cut almost seven and a half. I want the extra real estate uh, that I can see around the paper. So I upsize mine. Place two squares right side together. Notice I have uh, same fabrics uh, right side together. Place the uh, paper on top and pin. I don't know if you could see, we had basically pins in here. They were out here. We want them out of the way of our stitching line. And you're going to shorten your stitch length considerably. I generally sew mine on a 1.5. Starting here, there's number one. I come on, stop at the circles, pivot, and come all the way around. Once that's done, you simply cut on the sewn lines, or excuse me, on the solid lines. See, I don't know if you can see that from above there. Hopefully you can. But now you simply take your, you don't need a spinning mat. I like it, it's convenient, but you don't have to have that. But the part that I love about the star singles, I don't have to find a quarter inch away from that drawn line. All I have to do is sew on a dash line. I can do that much more reliably than finding a quarter inch seam allowance. And I think my favorite part of all is I don't have to square up later. These are the size they need to be. My only job, sewing exactly on the dash line and later on, when I have my half square triangles, sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. If I can do that, I will have an absolutely accurate block in much less time, more precise, and they don't square up. It's wonderful. So these are something I strongly advocate, whether you're a beginner or experienced. With the shortened stitch length, it allows my paper to really feel perforated and very easily be removed. So that's all that you would do now. And again, it looks like I have a, kind of a mix and a match here. Oh, yes, we had examples of both this one and this one. So that's fine. Same technique, whether you're doing the pinwheel or you're doing the corners, you're going to make those half square tri triangle units the same way. So let's go ahead and just press this. Maybe I'll press it to the gingham. But I want to show you the measurement. This should measure three inches going into our pinwheels. I'm just going to cut this off here. And let's get rid of a little bit of our mess. And let's measure that. And look at that. I, I mean, it's just right on the money. So when you have those created that way, and we've done these this way, there, you're again just laying this out, right? You're just you're using the same thing that we did before, except these came together so much faster. Right sides together, right sides together, quarter and seam allowance. You have to dial that in because there's nothing to square up now. The block though will measure your five and a half. If you're using the star singles, and if you're using the quarter and seam allowance, you will get that five and a half inch. Uh, pinwheel and you'll also get your three inch half square triangles for your corners. So you'll set those aside until you're able to complete your flying geese. Now this is a fun technique. The original way I learned to make flying geese, talk about hit and miss. I, if I got a really good flying geese walk, it was a good day. It was a good day. We had the rectangles, squares in the corner, draw the line, sew and flip very much like I talked to you about with this. You can see that's kind of almost like half of a flying geese block, right? Um, fast flying geese. Your instructions will talk you through having your background fabric and two of these kind of the points of your flying geese. And again, we're going to sew a quarter inch on either side of that. Let me just rotate these pins because we, we would be sewing that. Uh, let me grab that one here. 
In fact, I'm going to go sew this with you. I want you, this is such a cool technique. Now this is based on the Creative Grid Flying Geese tool. That's the measurements we've used inside the pattern. You can square up the block without this tool. This is magic though. I'm, <laughs> I am here to tell you if you want to make creative, uh, you want to make flying geese blocks consistent and accurate and fast every time, buy this tool. It is absolutely one of my now top three favorite creative grid tools and I don't really make flying geese blocks without it. So looking at the tool, in fact, let me just turn a piece of paper over so that you're able to, to see it. Sometimes it's hard to see it from above. Let me just see if I can do it on the pink paper. Do you see this over here? This will give you some instruction on how to use this ruler. How do I read this ruler? Finish size. Let's start over here. Let's look at this. We said that this is currently going to be measuring five and a half by three. So that means this is going to finish at two and a half by five. So knowing, okay, what's this finished unit supposed to be once it's sewn into my quilt block? These function the same way as star singles. It's always based on sewn into the quilt. So we want a two and a half by five and a half inch flying geese uh, block unit. So that's saying we'll always follow instructions for letter E. That's saying out of that main uh, large fabric, that's this fabric right here, you will cut a six and three quarter inch square and you will cut four of the smaller these to three and three quarter. What that allows us to do from that one large square and those four small is make four flying geese units with the ability to square up with this tool. You don't have to use this tool to square up. Does it make it so much more accurate and easy? Yes. It is built for this mission. This is its function. And every time I use a tool that's built for that function, I have great results. So, you know, I'm always after accurate piecing. I want my points coming together. You know, when my guests come to the house and they don't know anything about quilting, no matter what I display, they're like, wow. But when I have a friend that's a quilter at the house, they know, <laughs> they know what's a good quilt and what's a good quilt block. And they're kind of looking at the points of my quilt and I want to be proud of what I'm showing, uh, displaying to someone who knows. So with the drawn line, let's uh, sew a quarter inch on the other side of that, being as precise as we can, but don't worry, we will have the ability to square up. Okay, so let's as you would suspect, we'll just cut on that drum line. Get rid of those threads there. This is going to look strange when I press this out. But remember how we said we were cutting four of these smaller squares. So far we've only used two. So keep track of that for me. <laughs> and you'll see that it's such an efficient way. I love that it takes less fabric to make flying geese blocks this way than the traditional way with the rectangles, the squares in the corner, the sew and flip, and you're cutting a lot away. Um, this is a far more efficient use of fabric. So we'll press away from our main piece and you'll repeat that. So we have two that, that look like this. And now let's bring in our extra, there it is up there. This will sit right there in that corner and we've got the drawn line and you'll repeat that. And again, doesn't matter really where you start, whether you start on that side or the, that side, make sure you're right in that kind of saddle there pin that and again repeat in fact i'll go do that real quick just sew the quarter inch seam allowance on either side let me go do that i'll be right back okay 
There's a reason they call this fast flying geese. Making four at a time so fast. Just like before, cut on that drawn line. Once again, pressing to the outside. Okay, and just like that, you saw that in real time. Now we will turn to our tool. Let's look at the next part of our tool. I'll try that pink <laughs> paper again. So we talked about this letter E. What does that mean? This is now coming into play. We have trim one on this side of the ruler as we're looking at the wording. And then over on this side, we have trim tool. Naturally, we're gonna start off with trim one first and then we'll move on to trim uh, two. It's gonna take a little bit of space because I'm gonna rotate this, but we talked about being letter E. So let's just grab any one of these and we will be following this technique. See how they, we have our drawn lines here? Maybe you'll be able to see them on the fabric. See how that's, I'm gonna push that up until that V is right in that saddle. I now am going to trim these two sides. Continue the rotation of your mat, another clockwise rotation. And I'm just going to slide now. Here comes trim two, two. see that trim two? There's my E again. I'm now sliding this into the slot. I've trimmed up this side, I've trimmed up this side, so I have three ways to confirm I'm where I want to be, on my left, on my bottom, and I have my V. Hold steady, we'll trim, and we'll trim. You have a perfect flying geese unit ready to go into your quilt block. This measures a perfect three inches by five and a half. I've told you before, I'll tell you again, I'm not that precise. Um, using these tools to get me to that place so that I have precise components going into a quilt block is the key to having a beautiful finished block in the end. Um, there may be some of you that are far more experienced and just talented than me. Um, I wish I were you, but I, 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 and I do try. Uh, sometimes I don't have these resources. Maybe on a court retreat, maybe I forgot to bring it with me. I've done all of those things. And I, it's okay. My quilt blocks are, I mean, passable, but nothing like the assistance of these tools. And I find them fun to use. So um, you saw it in real time, how the ability to now uh, they, these come together so fast and so precise so that now when I bring these together, I've got this was made with star singles, this was made with the flying geese tool, everything is just locking together. Once you have that, of course, we're placing this right side together and you can decide what size, what side do you want to sew that on? That's, that's your decision and of course you will be let me just bring that block kind of front and center. We'll just talk you through this component. This is where you're going to sew your flying geese units to your, your uh, pinwheel. And you know, it's really nice to have this on, up top because you see that little point there. That's where the needle will be passing. Same thing on the other side. All right, here right side together, of course, right side together, quarter inch seam allowance, and you'll be wanting to perhaps press seams open. That's always a great option. Once you have this row, this row, and this row uh, sewn, you'll just sew those rows together and definitely be pressing seams open at that point. So I, it's been a longer tutorial, but I always want to let people know, that, hey, maybe you start sewing because of the pandemic. I think we all did that. We dusted off our sewing machines, got things rolling because it was a necessity. 
and now it's something that we enjoy, but maybe you're not as comfortable with a more, what appears to be a more complex blocks like, like this. And if we can break it down for you and show you some options of maybe Star Single with the Flying Geese tool, you can see how achievable these blocks really are. So I hope you enjoyed learning some new techniques, some new options. Uh, by all means, we'd love to get your feedback. As you know, more tutorials coming your way. I'll see you soon on another Shabby video.